we have some amazing people at this church. Uh, the youth are just insanely talented. That was something else to watch. And uh, Pete volunteers so much time. Um, we are incredibly blessed uh, here at Grace Hope. So we're going to go ahead and pray and get started. Father, thank you for today. Thank you that you brought us all in here safely. Um, thank you for the birth of your son and for all that it means to us, Lord. All that it means for us. Uh, pray that you would bless the reading of your word today. Open our hearts to understand it. Um, speak to us loudly and clearly, Lord. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Okay, so I think, I think to truly appreciate something for how great it really is, we really need to think about life without it. And we all know this to be true, right? Like, right now, think about it if we didn't have a place to go. If we didn't have a building. Think about where we'd be. We'd be outside in the cold. I think we take for granted that we even have a place like this. Think about little things that you have. A chair to sit down in. It's easy to take it for granted. We sit down in them every day. Right? But think about if we didn't. We'd be standing up. Or sitting down on the, on the floor. Think about the car that you drove in here with. Think about if you didn't have a car. Right now you'd be trying to call somebody and get a ride to pick, come pick you up. Something we take for granted. Being able to get in a car and drive to where we need to go. Speaking of that, think about if you didn't have a phone. Or nobody to call. We, we seem to take, take things for granted a lot of times. Think about the home that you go to. That you have a home to go to. This is such a great gift that we've been given. That God has given us. Think about your family. How, what your life would be like without your family. Without your marriage. The person that you're married to. Your children and the joy they bring in your life. Some of you might be thinking, well, you weren't there on the way in. It wasn't a very joyous morning. But you know what I mean. Like life is not the same without those that we love and God has blessed us with. If you're young or you're older and blessed, think about what life would be like without hair. I know what it's like. <laughs> I told Jenny I was going to switch to a, a shampoo with more bounce. I don't, I don't know if it's going to matter or not. Think about your income. That you actually have income. That you, you don't have to wake up tomorrow and go stand in the unemployment line. You don't have to worry about where money is going to come from to pay for your bills. If you're healthy, think about your good health. Think about what it's like not having good health. If I get it, this happens to me every time. If I get a sick, Jenny calls it a man cold. I get sick. I get sick when I get, well, I get sick when I get a cold. It's just, science says that men get it tougher. I'm just saying. It's, it's true. It's true. It does. I will send you guys articles. Let me know and I will email them to you. <laughs> <laughs> but when, you, when you're sick, you wonder, you're like, man, I forgot what it was like to be healthy. I took all that time for granted that I was healthy. Like, if, if you don't have a, a disastrous man cold or have a cold right now, you think about it, how, how, uh, how good it is to, to feel good and healthy. And it kind of puts things in perspective, right? Like, it, it makes us appreciate things a little bit more when we, when we think about not having them. So today I want to I ask you to think about something else. I want you to think of your life without Jesus. I want you to think about it as if you've never heard of him. As if, as if the, the truth of God's word didn't exist. <clears throat> think about a world where we have been created and just left alone. The world out there is dark and full of despair and darkness and we are stuck without knowing the love of our creator knowing anything about Jesus we have no hope of anything ever getting better 
Think of this. And being imprisoned in your own sin, in your own shame, without any hope ever of getting out of it. Your conscience bearing that weight, knowing that you are in sin and there's nothing you could do about it. No hope of rescue whatsoever. In prison. <clears throat> with no help at all. Now in, my, in my life, I've, I've traveled some, some dark roads. I've been in the prison walls, literal jail walls, and walls of my own sin and shame. And I know what it's like. I can feel what it's like to, to be in that position and still have heard of the truth of the gospel. And still have knowing that there was somebody that maybe I could cry out to that could help. Think about a world where that doesn't exist. Where there's no Jesus, no hope. That's a dark place, right? You might say it's, it's hard, hard for you to do because you've walked with Jesus since you were a kid. Well, here, here's the truth of the matter. The great news that we have. He didn't leave us alone. He sent Jesus. Isaiah 9-2 says the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. Isaiah would go on to say, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness. From that time on and forever, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. See, this, this child being born that, that we celebrate, this reason that, that, we, that Christmas is such a big deal to, to us as Christians who, who know Jesus is because it's a purpose. Jesus was sent with a purpose. Our life has changed because of what he has done. This, this child being born isn't just something that we can glance over. Or just, just be another holiday. As Christians, we don't dare take this for granted. Luke 4.14 4, says Jesus returned to Galilee. Now this is, after, this is after he was born and his ministry started. It says Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. And news about him spread through the whole countryside. He was teaching in their synagogues and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue as was his custom. He stood up to read and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found a place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind. To set the oppressed free to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. This is why he came. See, we, we think about a life without Jesus and, and how horrible that would be. How horrible it would be to have no hope, to be stuck in the darkness, to not have anybody to, to rescue us. To know that we were covered in sin and there was nothing we could do to change it. But the truth of the matter is God moved towards us. He gave us Jesus. 
He didn't leave us alone. He shined a light in the darkness. He, he brought Jesus to pro proclaim the joy of salvation to those who are poor in spirit, to break us out of the prison of our own sin and shame, to give us eyes to see our sin for what it is and him for who he is, to break us free from the oppression of a dark world separated from God, to let us know that we found favor with our creator. See, this is a beautiful thing. God saw us in the state we were in. And he moved towards us. He moved towards us. This is, this is no ordinary day that we can glance over. If you're, if you're a Christian and you know Jesus, your life is totally different because he saw you in a prison of your own sin and shame and rescued you. The Bible says that this child that we celebrate would grow and one day become your sin and nail it to the cross. Think about that. Every sin you personally ever committed, the holy, perfect Son of God would become and nail it to the cross. Now think of that. Think of the, the most horrible sin that you've ever committed in your life. That you're like, I, I just can't believe I did that. At one point in time, Jesus became that sin for you. So you don't have to pay for it. He took it upon himself. This is why he came. You know how you have forgiveness, hope, and a future. Because Jesus took his cross and busted down the door of your prison cell. And this is, this is why we celebrate. We're free. This is why we gather and sing songs and praise and worship. And we're going to talk about more, more on this in a couple weeks. But we don't sing and pray and gather because to earn God's favor. We, we do it because he's already given it. This is gratitude. Aim straight at God for what he's already done in our life. We can do nothing to earn it. Jesus did it all for us. Christmas is much more than a holiday for us. This isn't the birth of a mere baby. This is the birth of, of peace and salvation and joy in our life. This is a celebration of God's love moving towards us and rescuing us. This is light personified coming into the world. This is truly, truly a reason to celebrate. The band is going to come up and, uh, and sing a song. And while they're, uh, while they're singing a song, I uh, just want you to know, if you have business to do with Jesus today, if you have business to, to go to the foot of the cross and, and talk to Jesus, these, these two front rows we have are, are open for you to come to the altar. And we have people standing by that will come up and pray with you if you come up here. But I want you to know, if you're here and you, you don't know Jesus, you're, you're obviously free to celebrate Christmas. But you're doing so from inside of a jail cell. There's only one person that can break that down. There's only one person that you can cry on and he will rescue you. There's only one person that can, that can free you from the sin and the shame that this life brings. You can't earn it. You can't do it yourself. Only Jesus. Only Jesus. And that invitation is here. He is here knocking at the door right now, possibly talking to you. And if you want to come up and do business with him, this would be... Christmas that you will never ever forget. I can promise you that. Your life will change. The band is going to come and or the band is going to going to sing and play a song. Um, the altar is open and we have people standing by to pray with you.